This is Steve Downs, the voice of Master Chief Spartan 117. Welcome to Quality Time, the KO Koala Entertainment Podcast. Anthony and Skyler will take it from here. Master Chief, out. Hello and welcome to Quality Time, the Kale Koala Entertainment Podcast. I'm Skylar Sokol. And I'm Anthony and, and Nicolosi. Like, I'm just going to, I'll That's just say my name. Very nice. Very nice. <laughs> and uh, you may have heard a little, a little bit of mic noise from Anthony's end at the beginning there. He was just uh, telling the banshees in I his house thinking... to be a little quiet. Uh, Freaking freaks. Uh, today, Ooh. though. What DNA strands do they have? <laughs> I'll tell you the loud part is from Anthony. So, <laughs> um, today we are going to talk about the lens of fairness. Is that correct? Yes. Yes. This is another fantastic insight from the man, a myth, a legend, Jesse. Schell. Our best friend and, and boyfriend, Jesse. Oh, yeah, Schell. it's constantly evolving our relationship. <laughs> um, in his book, the a book of the book, a book of game design. <laughs> The book of the art of desi- <laughs> game design, a book of lenses. I'm that, so yes, that's it. The that's art it. of game design, a book of lenses. Um, by just wow. Shell. highly recommend it if you're like game dev or want to get into game dev. I know some people who are longtime game devs, um, who I was talking to on Instagram and Twitter who just picked it up actually. Oh, so, yeah, on your recommendation, I'm sorry, on your recommendation. Uh, one person, the other person, oh. no, uh, they just like posted a story of it. I'm like, Oh shit. I love that book. And they are, I know they're a long time, uh, whatever industry veteran over a decade in the industry. So it's clearly, oh. you know, pertains to whatever you're just starting out. You're uh, you've been in the industry, you're a game dev and you just want to, it's w- so well rounded, you know, it's, it's, it, it really tackles game design from all kinds of angles. So this one lends a fairness. Okay. The I, I will read the l- description of the lens right now. Jesse Shell says, um, the lens of fairness is about thinking carefully about the game from each player's point of view and taking into account each play taking into account, I'm sorry, each player's skill level. Find a way to give each player a chance of winning that each will consider to be fair. Okay. So that's the lens, if you will. Look yeah. at your game. Look at a game and consider, do all the players have a fair and challenging way of winning? You know? Um, and this brings up some interesting questions. Should my game be symmetrical from a design perspective? And, I mean, the way that actually is... So, to be symmetrical, should it be asymmetrical? How that manifests, depending on the game, can defer... Um, is it more important for my game to have multiple ways for people to have fun or for like multiple di- for different kinds of players to have fun and fu- have challenging fun if you will or is it more important for it to be a good way of accurately evaluating comparative skill level so i think right? we're in a really interesting uh sort of situation here you and i because um, I think Rude. you are a pretty big fan of symmetrical multiplayer design. design. And mm-hmm. I am a really big fan of asymmetrical multiplayer design. Dota, yep. Valorant, board games. I always gravitate towards asymmetrical games over symmetrical games. Um, fighting yep. games are like inherently asymmetrical. Um, asymmetrical yeah really? because there's yeah, yeah, all yeah, different yeah, characters yeah, yeah. right fighters have different ways yeah sure, yeah. sure, sure. well some fighting games are more symmetrical than others but my favorite games like blaze blue my absolute favorite fighting game is one of the most asymmetrical fighting games there is okay so i think that's really interesting so um i maybe i think maybe starting with like symmetrical versus asymmetrical games could be an interesting way to look at this um two symmetrical games we've both played a lot of halo infinite and rocket league Mm-hmm. So yeah. let's talk they about are... fairness in those games. Yeah, I mean, the uh, it's interesting because there's layers here, right? Because from a uh, theor- th- you know, theoretically, they are equivalent. They they provide a symmetrical um, 
play you know symmetrical game design like from uh everyone starts out with the same shit same abilities everyone ha in halo you have pickups on the map but everyone has equal access to that yep. equal amount of players um in rocket league it's even more symmetrical yeah even even more even, yes. yeah it's a, yeah even more symmetrical same car i mean cars have different hit boxes that's the uh, the only yes. really wrinkle i can think of because yes. you have same speed and everything right yeah. like, i mean that honestly almost makes it more asymmetrical than halo though at least from a, a character design perspective because all the halo characters are identical and your yeah. loadouts are identical the main asymmetrical halo design that you could even argue for is the pickups on the map but for since everyone has equal access to them they're not really asymmetrical yeah, I was thinking uh, the first thing I thought of was like the spawn points because like if you think of live fire, does every does do both teams have an equal access to the camo from their spawn points? Yeah, garage, spawn points would be tower? the only thing that 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 is true. Yeah, but those spawn. are like RNG, which makes it even more weird. Yeah, but regardless, they're very close to almost, you know, from a technical perspective, purely symmetrical. Yeah. Um, I would call them two being... of the most symmetrical games that are like modern games, multiplayer games, honestly. I agree. That being said, if you do not have good equal level playing fields, like skill levels of people, I, I would not say it feels fair. You know what I mean? Yes. Like if you if you don't have good skill based matchmaking in place where you're playing against like similarly skilled opponents, it, the, your experience is not going to be that was a fair you know loss. It's going to feel like fuck. Well, you put me against somebody way harder. So I I, I think that will be something we can circle back to later because I think there are some games that um, another point that Jesse brings up um, is he asks if. If you want, as a game designer, game dev, to have players of different skill, level, skill levels to play together, how do I need to change my game to make sure that's interesting and challenging for everybody? Yeah. And I think there's some games, like, you know, teaser, you know, hint, Nintendo games, especially in my head, that answer that problem in an interesting way for some of their casual modes, whatever. So we can circle back to that. But technically speaking, game design perspective, those those Rocket League and Halo give good examples of symmetrical game design. I think it's really um, interesting what you said that um, that the difference in player skill makes those games feel unfair. I actually think in symmetrically designed games that matters even more because in yeah. asymmetrical games there's a lot of other factors that could be at fault for the game feeling potentially not fair, right? Like, oh, our hero composition was bad, so we were, like, bound to lose anyway. Or, like, um, in a fighting game, it's just like, oh, this matchup is really hard, or I didn't know this matchup very well. Like, in Halo, you can never go into a 1v1 and be like, oh, I didn't know the match, the, like, the mechanics of this, like, 1v1 very well because everyone has the same mechanics, you know? Except, I mean, right, right, minus right. player skill. Um, in fighting games, that can happen all the time. So, like, I think in a symmetrically designed game, the only thing that's there for players to blame on it feeling unfair is skill. Mm -hmm. So that becomes even more important. And so you were going to say, how, how do we balance for players of different skill being games? One approach, Rocket League, Valorant, which not symmetrical, but still has applied this approach, Halo, I think, to some degree, is limiting the skill, the cues... So that you can't queue with a very wide range of players, right? In mm -hmm. Valorant, you, if you're at a specific rank, you can't queue with players below a specific rank. You just can't in ranked mode. You're not allowed. Mm -hmm. I, is that is yeah. Halo like that too? I'm not, I don't. I don't know. I haven't tried, and I'm going to be honest. I haven't really researched what's available in Halo Infinite. In Halo Five, I know that those kinds of aspects were. Um, at the uh, by the end, yes, we're in place. Mm -hmm. um, I also know that Halo treats different playlists, has different matchmaking parameters for different playlists. So, for example, if you're playing Halo Infinite, you're playing Quick Play. Um, if you think of some of the main parameters that go into match uh, matchmaking, you know, algorithm um, at a high level, it's like how long is the player waiting? How close to the player's skill level are the other players in the lobby? and proximity to server right so like you, more or less if you have those top three things quick play prioritizes speed of matchmaking which yeah. means you might have a looser skill you know range in that match ranked prioritizes skill um accuracy if you will yep. so you might wait longer whatever so 
Um, yeah, Rocket League yeah. and Valorant have both alter switched between how they prioritize speed of matchmaking versus skill at the highest levels because people were running into problems where they were either playing these horribly imbalanced matches or they were waiting up to like 30 minutes for games to like 45 right. minutes, like longer than a game itself. <laughs> yeah, and I think one of the interesting, just a small side note to that is like when you give the player agency to choose like how long it's like if you have the option of saying i want uh i can't remember if it was mcc who did this or which what game it was but that you had the option of saying like i'll wait up to this amount of time mm -hmm. right and if i don't find a player like fuck it just go why well, i accept i'm i'm making the decision to accept that feels somehow more fair to me that i made the choice to play like a wider skill bracket you know yeah. what i mean and i'll tell you dota is dota 2 is very transparent about this when you queue it gives you a message every time it expands the search queue the skill like range that it's searching so you can quit the queue and requeue if you want to keep the range small and it's right. like totally transparent to let you do that again i think that's an important aspect of especially for those games helping that experience feel fair because you can go into the game being like well i chose this you now know granted I mean? like, that still relies on the matchmaking algorithm being good right because <laughs> even if the game thinks that it got you a really fair match if the algorithm isn't good then what the game thinks is a fair match may not feel yeah, that sure. may not even be that fair to begin with right yeah um now let's i think let's talk about asymmetrical games a little bit yeah um, from that perspective and then maybe we can compare why yeah from a especially from a fairness perspective what's more compelling, why they're more compelling in different ways, maybe so, or why they are compelling in different ways, whatever. Yeah. Why so, do you uh, asymmetric Mr. Asymmetric man? Yeah. Um, I mean, I think it's really the, the big thing about asymmetrical games is that it really relies on the designers to balance the game. Well, right. Like it's much easier to balance a symmetrical game because you know, every change you make affects everyone equally. Mm hmm. Um, minus skill, right? Because there's still challenges in balancing, like, a oh, gun in Halo when, like, really good players are already, like, insane no, no. with it, right? And bad I mean, right? I get, I get your point. And, and to, like, my experience playing Overwatch when I tried it when it initially came out was that was, and it's the same with Destiny, like, class-based games that I give a shot to. Like, the th thing that drives me crazy is when, if I'm in a class-based game... I am dependent on my other teammates doing their parts, right? And if they don't, like, if we have a whatever super fucking good healer, yes, but like everyone else is shit, you know, like, and they are the other team is like everybody else is good and their healer sucks, it does not feel fair. It feels like, yeah, okay, you know, like if they have a kick ass sniper and we have a kick-ass healer, and then everybody else's ass, it doesn't feel fair. You yeah, class-based I mean? games puts people, and asymmetrical games in general, put people in more of roles, right? More well-defined roles. And that right. means that that makes it even harder to balance for skill, right? To right. make it feel fair, for sure. Because now not only do like individuals need to be matched well in skill but also the roles they are need to be well balanced and that get, it, it's definitely a really complicated problem so i think that's the biggest challenge with asymmetrical games but and honestly i find myself in asymmetrical games feeling like especially in like dota feeling like our matches are unfair all the time uh and i it's sort of just like a reality of 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 that game that like you just sometimes get shit matches and you sort of just relish when you get really good matches because I, honestly, I think in that game, it's just so complex. There's so many heroes, so many items, like millions of combinations of things that could be happening, plus how good players are doing on that day, how focused they are, because, you know, it's an hour-long game, so you need to be focused, and if you're not, it's not going to go... Like, there's too many factors, so you sort of just accept that sometimes it's shit, and you hope those games don't last very long, right? And that's, like, crazy, but that's just sometimes... Ha the The... The quality of the good matches in really complex asymmetrical games is so much, so fulfilling that it's worth trudging through the like the annoyance of the shitty ones, I think, for a lot of people.
No, it's interesting. I mean, I I would say for Overwatch, the reason why I turned on it relatively quickly it was because just like the rest of the game wasn't satisfying to trudge through. You know, like yeah. I didn't enjoy the rest of yeah, and the I mean experience. I trust I've turned on Overwatch long ago too, right? Like I don't think that's a great example of a really fun asymmetrical game personally. Now so I did have more fun like I'll say Destiny did better on that front in that on two regards, Destiny inherently like you go into that PvP experience and it's like I'm accepting this is unfair because I could have the fucking unlocked super gun and the other motherfuckers got like a rare pistol. Right. Yeah, that's you know? a definitely a different scenario, right? That's similar to the Dota and, thing where there's just like so many factors that you're just like, all right. <laughs> and in general, I would say the deltas between Destiny classes are not as no. significant as like even Overwatch. You right. Know? Like, yeah, the asymmetrical there, nature is much simpler for sure. Yeah, it's much more muted. Yeah. And fighting games are where you end up with like the most difference here, right? Like Guilty Gear Strive, which came out this year, there was one character, Soul Bad Guy, who was very clearly overpowered. Even the devs during the developer backyard after the se- the the last beta before release were like, Soul Bad Guy is the main character of the game. We think that's who a lot of beginners picked up, so we wanted to make him good so that people will enjoy the game. They literally, which translated means we made this character overpowered on purpose and literally it ruined the game, in my opinion, for a long time until they balanced him because Hmm. it was just like you just like didn't want to fight him. Like anytime I got you in that game, you could see what character you were going to fight before you accepted the match. I literally never accepted a single match against that character after like the first few times because it was just like this is pointless. Now, couldn't they technically have like banned him from like competitive modes yeah but they don't right and no they people, didn't and people in like, fighting games generally try not to nowadays that's very much a a relic of the past um and really only something that's happened in smash bros which is you know the scorn of the fighting game community <laughs> it was well, so i was just t- saying thinking like most of the asymmetrical experiences i try are team-based and I do feel like a benefit you might have in an like yeah I play Smash but I don't really consider myself a you're not playing like one v one no item Final Destination for a thousand dollars no definitely not <laughs> playing that I mean even when I played Tekken and stuff I think the one aspect I don't find the actual gameplay loop satisfying enough to play those a lot but uh, one thing that is maybe better now that I think about it is the fact that even though it's asymmetrical you it's just you yes like it can you know what i mean like you you're you're the how fucked you are in those asymmetrical experiences like you could be fucked in a dota match if you are just if you don't stack up well from a hero perspective and strat perspective against other people but you're even more fucked if they if your teammates suck you know like right so you get multiplied on these kinds of asymmetrical the the shittiness and the unfairness almost gets like the uh, perception your perception of unfairness gets multiplied against these asymmetrical you know hiccups yeah uh, as, although as i don't know people are playing i don't know for me that feels more unfair though honestly like if we get outpicked i don't feel like that's unfair i feel like that's a mistake we made so it feels Out. fair well, because in Dota, you see the... You draft. Yes, right. you yes see, you exactly. Know, you so, like, that um, is built into the design, and that honestly feels more fair to me. Yeah, that's fair. Um, that's true. But, you so, talking about Rocket League, though, and teammates, right, I think that it's really interesting because a lot of people always say, my teammates suck. And in general, your teammates are probably just as good as you. <laughs> Almost yeah. always. It, it, unless your rank is climbing, it is likely there are you're, some bad ones. There yeah, are some bad them. ones, but that doesn't mean they're worse. They're be- worse than you. That means that yeah. game they were worse every, than you, right? Yeah, every now and then you get some motherfucker who's like at the end of his night and he really right. shouldn't have queued, you know. But or just someone yeah. who loses focus for a game, right? It happens all right. the time, and so that makes it really complicated because it gives people this like excuse to just be like, everyone around me sucks. I'm the best, and then these people no, feel sure. very entitled to ranking up and those and honestly like those are the people who are playing ranked people in ranked always want to feel like they're getting better people are not there and there's i've read articles about this people are not really interested in knowing their exact correct skill they're interested in always 
improving, like seeing their skill improve. I believe it. That's why yeah, games really like it. Rocket League implement grace game mechanics. This is another way to help people feel like matches and ma- and multiplayer are fair. Where like in Rocket League, if you go to a loss below your rank, you stay at that rank until you lose again. But if you get high enough to go into the next rank, you immediately go into the next rank. Mm-hmm. So there is a one game leniency deranking, but that doesn't exist going up. Going up, you just go up right away. Yeah, you know, inter- interestingly on that thought, like the the end, the tail end of Halo Five, and then rolling into Halo Infinite. I know they, they, you know, Josh Menke, who's not currently working at Three Four Three, actually put out a white paper on True Skill Two, which was the algorithm that they're using for the matchmaking algorithm, some parameters. And what, what, like at a high level, one of the things that True Skill Two could do is it could just provide more levers if you will leverage points in the matchmaking algorithm parameters for does you know developers to be able to quantify skill so Uh um more than just my team wins or loses which is very heavily weighted in like the rocket league algorithm in halo infinite right now your personal performance if you like really carried your team you'll see you don't drop like almost any mmr um Barring you get really good, like some of the pros will complain, they're literally at the top of the MMR range, and the, the, the algorithm's expecting them to carry, and if right. they don't carry, then they lose. But um, So, it's, to your point, um, True Skill 2 probably, you know, de- helps that notion, where it's like, I personally, as I play ranked, when I lose, I have, I have, I don't think I've ever lost and been like, fuck i lost i don't feel like i deserve to lose that much mmr we're like if i turn on bacchus mod and i want i have a rocket league game and i do really good and whatever we got shitty goal in overtime and we lose um and i feel like i carry but i lose whatever the same amount as the last game where we really deserve the loss you know what i mean that feels unfair i understand it's a hard problem to solve but i'm just saying my feeling as a player playing Halo Infinite is a lot more like, oh, that felt fair, you yes. know? That's because Rocket League has no skill-based uh, MMR adjustment. Right. And Valorant actually originally had skill-based MMR adjustment, and I loved it. I thought it was a great system, and they completely yeah. removed it. Why? I, Just cause- I guess people complained. I have no idea why. I thought it was really good, and then they made it so that the lower rank you are, the less skill-based uh matters okay which is very weird and then at the highest rank they made it so skill-based also doesn't matter and only win loss matters because they're like everyone should be at this skill at this i don't know it was very strange i don't know what was happening in their data that made them like make these adjustments i'd be very interested to know yeah no that's interesting because for Um, me like if i if a system, and maybe I'm very unique here, I have no idea, I would love to know, but for me, if I play a game in ranked, and I'm shown everyone's MMR, and the rank that I lost or gained, and like, I, I can easily evaluate from that image whether I thought the game felt fair was fair or not, mm-hmm. right? And there's tons, in Rocket League, so often I think that wasn't, it, I like, this was not fair. Right. Um, no, I agree. I agree with you. And yeah, you can Rocket- get that data in Rocket League, even though it's not they don't give it to you for for uh, without external programs. But yeah, I mean, Rocket League feels like it's just like plus 10, I win minus 10, I lose, you know, all the time. No that's matter what, what it is. And, yep. And so Dota Dota is is mostly that way as well. And it also annoys me, especially in a game you're going to commit an hour or two. You're telling me you're not going to take my skill into account. <laughs> yeah, it sucks. I mean, like I said, in the event that I have a teammate who I feel is equally skilled to me and we played good and the other team played good and we lost. Okay. Okay. Yeah. We lost, you know, but it's those, what seems relatively frequent, you know, moments where to some extent it feels unfair, you know? Yeah. Um, I will say, and Sean mentioned this earlier before the podcast that the larger, the amount of people on each team, the less of a problem this is. Um, the larger the amount. Yes. So like in Battlefield, for example, this or like a game like that, it feels it matters less. In Halo Big Team Battle, uh, it matters less. 
Just because your individual impact can be less. Right. Less. Exactly. Yeah. So like, it's just like, or it's just more chaotic. So you're more willing to accept the variance maybe. No. Yeah. Although, yeah, I mean, I mean, I'll say we have big team battle in Halo has been some of the worst matches I've played as far as fairness can, felt. I may, I was going to say like maybe to a point because like you can still really own I like um, maybe on a battlefield 64 v 64 yeah. kind of setup. I know, think that's because, more what we were thinking, yeah. But even then, right? There's some I still feel like even in battlefield if you had like a fucking super 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 elite squad of five dudes, yeah. you know, in that 64 team they can leverage the sandbox in ways they'll shit on the other team for sure. Yeah, yeah. You know? But um, so, I think the reality, though, is that in Battlefield, since it's so big, like your micro engagements matter more to your perception of fairness than the macro match. Like I don't think real, people really give a shit whether you win or lose the macro match in Battlefield. What matters more is if you like have cool micro interactions. Yeah, I don't. I agree with you. I just and I haven't played enough Battlefield to know for sure. I just think I feel like I suspect that when I was playing this last beta and there were fucking people in the helicopters and vehicles, I was thinking it's similar. It feel it felt similar to my experience in the war zones or big teams of halo in which like, if there's a few players, even one or two in halo. So in, in battlefield, it's going to need to be more, right. but like who know how to leverage like the vehicles and they know sort of the choke points on the map. They can, they can really further the objective for their squad. If the other team can't answer, yeah, you know, yeah. like if, there's like five motherfuckers flying helicopters and then one dude, you know, two armored vehicles or whatever. And the other team's just like on a different skill level has nothing, you know, or they yeah, bring yeah. in one fucking car at one point. That's like, true. You know. But I think that be, I guess maybe those situations more are rarer the larger the teams. are. Yeah, I, I, I think that. Right. Whereas in Rocket League, we feel like it happens like. 40 to maybe even like 40 or 50 percent of the time in battlefield that's probably like one in every you know 10 games or something 20 games yeah no it's true so it's true. that's in, uh, an interesting factor so you were saying though how do we make games better for players of wide skill levels and you were saying nintendo does this well did you have an example in mind i mean i just i i thought i yeah the one i was specifically thinking was something i experienced just yesterday was uh mario kart because mm -hmm. I was playing Mario Kart with my kids, my Michael, my son, uh -huh. beat me in two races. On Hell the yeah! I mean, I think that's more of a reflection of your lack of Mario Kart skill. Just saying. Yeah, I mean, I did have. <laughs> Let like, me the come over and see baby. see what I could do. <laughs> I had the tiny baby Joy-Con, and it had oh, motion god. sensing on. Oh you god! Know, you were playing stuff. with tilt controls, as they yeah, say. Yeah, I had tilt controls on. So, like, you know, it it, it was. It that's was amazing, tough, though. That sounds fun. Yeah, I I beat him in two matches. He beat me in two matches. I won the Grand Prix. Don't worry, because I got fourth the time he beat mm -hmm. me. He got mm -hmm. seventh the mm -hmm. time I beat him. Mm -hmm. But uh, it the mechanics around the item pickups and stuff are uh, even the playing field, right? He yes. he read he read um, shelled me a few times in one of them that he ended up winning in the, the one I got fourth place mm -hmm. and he, he red shelled me a few times. He, uh, whatever got the, I got a fucking banana and he gets the toad boost or uh -huh. whatever shit, you know? So yeah, the, the, the comeback mechanics with the items in the, especially the most recent Mario Kart are very blatant, right? Like you can't, you have to be, I think in like the last three to four places to get a bullet bill, which is like by far the best item in the game basically guarantees you to get to like, sixth or fifth place no matter what and like like they they're very blatant and i think it's great it makes for it can make the game feel really unfair sometimes though i will say no it does it right? does so you like i think it the the time i feel like it feels the most unfair is when you are doing good and are yes you know impact it makes it feel whatever. more fair for people who like are doing bad but less fair for people who are doing good. And I don't even know if fair is the right word. It feels more fun to the people who are doing bad. I think they would probably admit like, yeah, I blue shelled you and whatever the fuck. You know what oh, I mean? Yeah. So they might sure. not say it was fair. Yeah. I'm not sure fair is what you come away with even. I think it's, it's I mean, more the point's kind of just fun, right? Yeah. And that's the, if I want, this is how Jesse says, if I want players of different skills levels to play together, wh what, means will i use to make the game interesting and challenging for everyone so it's like 
the way he says it there is almost a concession as to like you can't really make it perfectly fair. Right. It just maybe, needs to be interesting. Right? Yeah. So it's you know the challenge. It's still challenging. I, I would agree. I I feel like uh, trying to whatever maintain enough of a buffer in first place in Mario yeah. Kart to be able to compensate for the things you're going to get fucked by is a challenge and is fun and is interesting. A hundred percent agreed. Like the the factor of like there's a lot of people who do strats where they like uh, stay close to the second place person. So if a blue shell comes, they can break behind right. them and they'll get hit by the blue shell or like holding a banana so that you can block red shell. Right. There's a lot of stuff built into the game for the front people to like employ interesting and challenging skill to mitigate the like comeback mechanics. Right. Yeah. Totally so, true. So yeah, it's, it sounds like, yeah, you can't. And this is something I think, uh, this is why some modes like Fiesta and stuff and Halo Infinite are so important in my opinion to be there for casual players. Right. Because like if you're Brittany, and she jumps into big team. She's having fun and stuff. But even big team is like even starts, even loadouts across the map. Yeah. Fiesta adds this element of randomness to it that helps level it a bit. Because the guy who's super skilled might spawn with a fucking plasma pistol. And you, who are very new player, you whatever, have I've, you have rockets. Yeah, you know? yeah. So, um, no, I had a great time playing Fiesta. I thought it was really fun. I love modes like that. Yeah, I hope they in Halo Five there were variants of weapons, so you, c you can think of like there was normal, rare, or legendary, and mythic levels of guns. Oh, interesting. Right? So it was a battle and, royale, is what you're telling me. <laughs> I do that. Yeah, maybe <laughs> they have that. And in Halo Infinite's campaign, you have these like leveled up versions of guns, uh -huh. and so there was a version of Fiesta called Super Fiesta where those variants could also. Spawn. Oh, that so sounds not fun. Only yeah, it was fucking the like best mode in Halo Five. <laughs> yeah. So, um, I think I mean it's like Rumble that, in Rocket League, right? That's what I was gonna say. I think the way you answer that <coughs> problem, I am playing with my friends who are different skill levels, is that those games need to provide a playlist modes, whatever experiences for that group of players to be able to have to experience those parameters that whatever make it interesting and fun for everybody you need the fiestas you need the rumbles you need the whatever you know? yeah one interesting thing you said to me that about the halo infinite design intent that actually i think plays into this too is you told me that one of their main goals like with the repulsor for example was that even when you get fucked over by it it should feel fun, fun. and i mean if you can make the situations where you are losing feel fun i think you're solving the fairness problem mm -hmm. but that's, it's really hard to do that universally like obviously a repulsor can feel really fun, but getting shot in the head with a battle rifle from the across the map is not usually going to feel fun. So, yeah, um, yep. yeah. Uh, I feel like you could go on and on forever on this topic. No, I think I think we got it good. We don't have a quality time question this week, so someone subscribe to Patreon and send us a question, please. There you go. Yeah, I get. Yeah, it just gets into old things because you could say like, is that why you add a light to the scope of the? sniper right because the fact that there's some ability to anticipate the shot and maybe try and defensively make a play to get out of the way makes it more fair and mm -hmm. thus more fun you know yes. what i mean yeah totally i think so i think like yeah providing the player opportunities to mitigate negative situations so that instead of feeling like they had no control over the bad thing that happened to him and instead being like oh I know what I did wrong here and how I could not have this happen in the future makes a huge difference for how fair situations feel. Yep. Yep. I think that's yep. why kill cams are something I, I value so highly because like whenever I die in a game, I'm like, how did I die? How can I make it better? I want to like review the footage, you know, and without a kill cam, I'm just like, Oh, I guess I'll never know. <laughs> yeah. No, it's, uh, it's interesting. I don't, I don't in Halo ever feel like I need a kill kill cam, but I'm an experienced Halo player, and most of the time when I die, I know how I died. Right. Right. Like, yeah. For me, I, there are you know times I mean? all the time I die and have no clue what happened. Yeah. Um. And I feel like if I played low time to kill shooters where you're fucking just yeah lasered out of nowhere, you know what I mean? You would that would be even. More I'll tell you, Rainbow Six Siege has kill cams and it's amazing. Like. There, if you know how you died, you just Shit, skip dude. it. On, 
on that game though, yeah. you should totally need that shit. Some motherfucker shot you through a wall, <laughs> through like, like the, a tiny hole, like that they broke through three different walls. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, like you gotta have it in yes. that one for sure. Yeah, yeah and yeah, it's yeah. great because if you don't know how you died, you watch it and you're like, oh, okay, that guy was smart as fuck. Yeah, uh, yeah, no, and if you if you do know, then you just skip it, right? Like I feel like giving people as many options as possible to like mitigate unfairness for themselves is really valuable. Yeah. Anyway. Where can people find cool. us? You can find us at KO Koala. KO Koala, Knockout Koala, like fighting games. KO Koala Entertainment.com. There you have links to all of our social media. Most importantly, our Discord, where you can play our research idol game, which bah, 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 has an even new perk. So you get you get Woo. auto-entered into giveaways at level six. Uh, when you play the idol game, you get a second entry when you get to level nine. You can play our multiple choice trivia 24 7 and enter into our weekly $10 giveaways. People have been winning battle passes, cosmetic packs, you know. Uh, yep. But in addition, when you get to level 13, you can now, um, if you are an active member of the Discord and a good person, be invited into our Minecraft realm. Uh, we have more plans for the Minecraft realm, more information will be. Posted on our website as soon as I get less busy on more important things. <laughs> um, but yeah, even new, even additional perk, you can get some lore details on Agora, our upcoming single player physics FPS for PC and Xbox, of which we discussed a little bit on stream, even pre stream today. And NFTs. So if you're just in either of those yeah, things, we watch did. the pre stream. Yes, we did. We did talk both of those things a little bit before stream. <laughs> um, yes. So if you'd like to support the studio, you can join our flock of amazing patrons who are um, get a bunch of perks in addition, some behind-the-scenes content. Been, there's more coming. It's been a little sparse lately as the studio's a little heads down, nailing uh, nailing out critical Agora deadlines that, oh. as we're coming up to them. So, Stuff's coming. Anyway, Stuff's coming up. Yeah, behind Behind-the-scenes content, free merch every three or six months, depending on your perk access to a patron minecraft realm all kinds of good stuff so yes thank you so much to our patrons thanks you ever thanks to everyone who's listening ko koala entertainment.com oh my gosh ko koala entertainment.com next, next week that's our jingle the by the way our official jingle <laughs> next week game of the year game of with the year the with full squad with the boys josh and Boom. sean right on Hasta la vista. I wonder what Anthony's game of the year will be. I wonder. <laughs> mm. Although somebody said I couldn't choose it because it's like too late in the year. That's not opinion, true. That's not yeah, true. If it comes out That's not true. My bets. I honestly, in my opinion, game of the year, it can be either the game that came out this year or just game you played this year. It doesn't have to be. I don't care. Cool with me. I, like whatever, dude. Just pick a game that you like and tell me about it. Noki Simulator 45. Oh, man. That's the KO Koala's second game coming soon. And yes. then the crossover fighter where you can fight as the KO Koala. That is right. <laughs> All right. All right. Bye I'll for real. Thanks for listening. <laughs>